Hey, it's Mazzy. Welcome back. I want to talk about Billy Bragg. 40 years since his first album came out and his first music in 1983. And uh, these two records on cooking vinyl uh, just were issued these two anthology series, a single record set and a three record set. I'll jump into those in a little bit. And there are CD counter uh, parts to these records. But um, I really want to talk about this because what I love, one thing I love about uh, Billy Bragg is his honesty and his, uh, in a way, purity. He's such a, a, a punk folk poet, uh, a hybrid, obviously, of folk music and punk music. And I want to talk about uh, what I love about his. Stay tuned at the very end. Uh, there is a click through and I have a link uh, to a video I did three years ago with my friend, the archivist. We're both huge Billy Bragg fans and saw him several times in San Francisco at the Great American Music Hall. So we go through his entire catalog. It's not a deep dive, more of a showcase of our love of the music of, of Billy Bragg. But uh, this is celebrating 40 years of his music and his uh, amazing, uh, wonderful catalog. My introduction uh, to Billy Bragg was somewhat accidental in 1984. I think it was September 1984 at the Berkeley Community Theater. And it's such so perfect that I first saw Billy Bragg in, in Berkeley, California. Ber Berkeley's always been a political hotbed of left-leaning uh, politics and music and art. And uh, I went to see Echo and the Bunny Man at... Um, the Berkeley Community Theater, September, as I said, 1984. I've been a fan of theirs uh, since 1980. There was a band called the Flesh Tones, an LA band, more of a garage rock band uh, that opened up. And I might be misremembering some of this. And I think it was between the Flesh Tones and the uh, Echo and the Bunny Man, where Billy Bragg came out with a guitar, electric guitar, and an amp. And as I recall, it was between sets, and he came out, and the audience was restless waiting for Echo and the Bunny Men, and he just started playing. He he's like an, he just assaulted the audience, and I don't mean that uh, like physically abusing them or going after them and yelling at them, but he came with this kind of gnarly electric uh, guitar sound through this smaller amp, and his powerful Cockney accent just really came right at you. And I remember the audience being somewhat uh, restless and not really paying attention. And there might have been some booing. And I, you know, I read some subsequent articles on it said that the audience booed him throughout. But I don't remember that at all. In fact, what I remember after about two or three songs, myself especially, settled down. And I think he really won over the audience. And that was my first uh, take and my first impression and, and, and introduction to Billy Bragg a year after uh, his first record came out. This is a, a, a later edition. This is a 30th anniversary edition of his first record, Life's a Riot with Spy versus Spy, Billy Bragg. Uh, Barney Bubbles, the great uh, designer, uh, designed this cover. I'm not gonna showcase all his records, watch that other video, but I've been a big fan of Billy Bragg. I mean, what's great about it, he's this hybrid of punk and folk and alt country, which we call it now, and, and alternative uh, Americana, and so many different hybrids within that. And, and he's extremely political and, and a very social, consciously social activist. Uh, he's a, a writer. Uh, he wrote a great book on skiffle music and the, not just the music itself and where it came from, uh, from blues and rock and rockabilly and American music um, and black music and folk music. Uh, the, he writes about the culture of music. So he's an amazing musicologist as well. Um, these records really stand out. And I've been listening to these uh, all day yesterday and into uh, this morning uh, since I got these. And I just want to talk about his, his the musical influences and what I know about Billy Bragg. And of course, you should read more about uh, him and his whole history. There's one story I need to say here on, on the history of Billy Bragg, especially for those of you who don't know him. In 1983, he has this song, this single, The Milkman of Human Kindness. And he's listening to the great uh, 
British DJ John Peel on the BBC and where John Peel was talking about starving in the studio and not able to get food. So Billy Bragg actually brings him food, sticks in his single and wants the record to be played. Of course, John Peel plays the record at the wrong speed, 33, not 45, eventually corrects it. And that's how it all started, really, uh, for Billy Bragg and the BBC. Billy Bragg is a pure political being. I'd say the closest in America of an artist, uh, not sound-wise, but in terms of a folk singer, that I would compare him to that really basically doesn't compromise at all, and that was Phil Oaks. I'm a huge, huge fan of Phil Oaks' music. And, of course, that later on he does something very romantic and very unlike with Pleasures of the Harbor. And uh, Billy Bragg's music definitely doesn't sound like that, but I just think it's, um, it's, it's just really powerful music as well as his ballads and his uh, romantic uh, songs too. And now onto these wonderful uh, new comps and new collections. First, there's a single uh, edition that comes out. This one is, uh, they're both called The Roaring 40, 1983 to 2023 both curated by Billy Bragg himself. And unlike, uh, you know, normal greatest hits, this isn't a greatest hits record. It's, it's, a, it's a best of, but not purely a best of. Best ofs are always subjective when it's an artist like Billy Bragg. And uh, the single LP comes uh, with an insert, inner sleeve on this beautiful orange vinyl. As much as I like this record, he does go uh, into some later period stuff. One of my favorite beautiful ballads he ever wrote was I Keep Faith. And it's just a really uh, lovely, lovely song. And uh, this, is, this is a beautiful comp here. But I tell you, after I got through with it, I didn't feel nourished enough. Now, maybe it's because I know his music really well. I have pretty much every record. I'm a Billy uh, Bragg completist. I have all his records, all the CDs. Uh, several comps, uh, reissues, but I wanted to say this is the one. If you're considering Billy Bragg and you want to get into Billy Bragg, as much as I love that single record, this three LP set is the way to go because I think that's almost unfair. I think this is the one because you get a better feel. It's a better flow. You get the mix of all the different areas that weaves into his entire discography. Now, these come in three shades of green. Look at that, how sexy is that, right? It's more of your uh, Irish style, but look at this, look at this. Ooh, that is, that is stunning. I'm not always a fan of colored vinyl, but these are really nice. The pressings are great. I had a Wonderful time. I listened to the double album twice. And this is where I just remembered again, was reminded how much I loved uh, Billy Bragg and his music. Not only does this open up with uh, New England, a song that uh, doubles up on both. So basically, most people don't need both these records. I'm a completist. That's why I want and have both these versions. But again, go for the three record set if you have any inkling and any interest of wanting to dive into uh, this work. On this one has that great song, which I mentioned earlier, The Milkman of Human Kindness. And it just goes into a wonderful uh, array of songs from his entire 40 year career. Another song uh, favorite of mine is his uh, cover of The Beatles' She's Leaving Home. That was originally on a comp of Beatles songs, a benefit album. And I think that's the only song that he got a number one in the UK. It's a beautiful ballad. Again, it's got a thick cottony accent, but it's really wonderfully, wonderfully done. A personal favorite of mine, and it's probably the most, one of the most, I shouldn't say the only, but the overtly political song is a cover of this French anthem, the Internationale. And that is on uh, this collection here. I just l always loved the melody of that. And I think I first really noticed it in, what was it, early 1980s when uh, Internationale was used in the film Reds, the Warren Beatty political film of Jack Reed, the only American buried in the Kremlin. A very uh, movie about socialism and political, uh, you know, that political writer who uh, went uh, to Russia during the revolution there. And of course, the Russians really co-opted that song and became sort of the the rally cry of uh, the Soviet Union 
uh, in the turn of uh, that century there. And Billy Bragg does a beautiful version. It's very orchestrated and very heroic. And it's, it's just, I just love it so much. And I'm glad he included it on here. Um, Billy Bragg also did an amazing series of records with Wilco where the estate, the wife of Woody Guthrie, gave Billy Bragg these lyrics to write music to. And he collaborated with Wilco that backed him up and they sang some of it. And they did a series of these three great records, Mermaid Avenue. And I just love the power of uh, his music and the beauty of his music. He doesn't compromise. And, and you can tell every time he sings these songs, whether it's romantic ballads and love, just tugging at your heart love songs, as well, obviously, as well as the political protest songs. He believes what he's singing. He, he believes what he says. The last time I saw Billy Bragg was uh, when he did a wonderful collaboration with Joe Henry. And he did an in-store, actually, here in Seattle at Easy Street Records. He performed some of the uh, songs with Joe Henry. They did an album together of uh, songs, train songs that they sang at train stations going, I think, from the West Coast to Chicago. And it's just a magnificent Americana uh, folk album. I just love it. And Joe Henry produced one of his albums, I believe, as well. But um, very, very uh, stoked that there's this uh, series of records that are coming in now celebrating the 40th anniversary of Billy Bragg. I strongly recommend this record. And the other thing is, again, the three records that really flows really, really well. And if you're a CD person, there's apparently there's a two CD version of the three record set. So you want to go in that direction, I highly recommend you might want to try that. But now, after this, I am so hankering for it. And I, I wanted to resist it. I'm not quite sure if I can. There is a 13 CD set of 40 Years of Billy Bragg, part of this series right now. And I really want it now after going through this and you know getting back into uh, Billy Bragg and the music, the political, punky folk music, the beautiful Americana, alternate uh, country, alternate folk music. I just love this stuff. And, you know, Billy Bragg is the real deal. So um, I might consider checking out or trying to get that uh, 13 CD uh, set too after jumping in and diving into this. Uh, these are on uh, cooking vinyl out of the UK. I'll put a link in the description where you can get these or at least showcasing uh, this whole series. And I think there's a uh, European and uh, American outlets to check this stuff out. Anyway, I've done this before. After this, watch that great conversation with the archivist and I. It was just a fun hangout three years ago. I think just as the pandemic started that we were diving again into uh, the work of um, Billy Bragg. I think I saw him 12 times from that show at Berkeley to the I-Beam in San Francisco, to the Great American Music Hall several times in San Francisco. And a, great, a truly great artist, an important artist, a very important artist uh, in the UK and American political landscape of uh, folk music. Uh, again, uh, thank you for watching again. Check these records out. Mazzy loves you. See you next time.